Hi guys, my name is Meg and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do my daughter Sophia's 11 month update. Now normally Sophia is in these videos with me, but she is teething really bad right now and she's taking a nap and I'm going to just do this video without her because I feel like it would be kind of a disaster and she might cry the entire time and it just would not, it would not be very fun. It would be a little bit stressful. So I'm just going to do this without her and I'm going to try to add a lot of video and picture overlay so you guys can still see her and see what she's doing. But let's get right into this video and hopefully finish it before she wakes up because her naps have been very short lately. <laughs> she is 19 pounds now so I'm kind of thinking she'll make it to the 20 pound mark before she turns a year old because lately she, even though she's teething, she's still been going through this growth spurt and eating just tons of food which I love. I love it when she eats tons of food and I know for sure that she's getting enough. She still only has four teeth just like in her last update but she is working on two more top teeth. I think it's the, the two on either side of the ones she has up there already. I'm not positive because she won't really let me look in her mouth right now but I know that she's working on two because she she seems to like to get sets of teeth. It seems like it would be so much easier if she just got one at a time. I know it would like take longer but she just gets so incredibly cranky when she's teething because she gets two at a time every time and she always gets these terrible ear infections and teething rashes and diaper rashes. So that's kind of what we've been dealing with lately. She's had this really chronic diaper rash and it always seems to happen when she's teething so I'm pretty sure that's from teething because she eats the same foods no matter when she's teething or not. And the foods never seem to cause the diaper rash when she's not teething. Every now and then, especially right near the end of teething, when she's about to get the teeth, she'll break out in this teething rash that's just kind of all over her body. And I usually treat it with lavender and Roman chamomile essential oils diluted in coconut oil, and I just use that as a lotion. I, I rub it over her whole body, and it really seems to help. She's also just getting over an ear infection, and I've been treating it with homemade garlic oil. And if you haven't seen my home remedies for ear infections video, I will link that down below as well as in the cards because I'm doing those exact same things that I talked about in the video and it seems to work every single time. I've never had to take her to the doctor for an ear infection, thank God. She's down to two formula meals a day, one right after she wakes up in the morning and one right before she goes to bed in the evening. I actually only just recently dropped that third meal. She had been having one after her second nap of the day, but I'm trying to get her weaned before the new baby comes because I'm making her a raw milk formula and it has to be made every 24 hours and it's kind of a process and so I really want her to be weaned before the new baby gets here because there is no way I'm making the formula every 24 hours with a newborn. It's just not happening. <laughs> she's never really been the kind of baby to comfort nurse and so she's not super attached to having the bottle every day so it's really not a big deal whenever we drop feeding. She just really doesn't seem to care. <laughs> As long as she gets some kind of food, she's just she's just happy. So I'm super thankful that it's going smoothly. So every month when, when she turns another month old, that's when I drop a feeding. So now I'm down to two. So next month when she's a year old, I will drop probably her morning feeding. And then when she's 13 months old, I will just switch her evening feeding to just plain raw goat's milk. I'll just not mix up all the other ingredients into it. So I'll probably still give her milk right before bed just because it's comforting and I, I had a bottle before bed of just plain milk for years and I kind of feel like it'll still help her sleep better if she still has that kind of comfort of having the milk before bed every night. So that's at least the plan for right now. Her favorite food ever is broccoli right now and it's so funny that she loves broccoli so much. Like she would eat broccoli for every meal if I let her, which is amazing. I love that she loves healthy food. Apparently I used to like broccoli when I was little too. My parents told me that I used to say that I love broccoli more than chocolate. And that is definitely not the case now for me, but I guess Sophia takes after me that she really loves broccoli right now. So I hope that it carries on because it's really nice to have a healthy food that I know she'll take consistently and if she's not feeling like eating anything else, I know I can always get her to eat broccoli, so that's great. The only thing about broccoli though is it makes her pee smell so weird. And I remember when I got this big bag of broccoli from Costco because she eats a ton of broccoli, so I just, I got a huge bag of it. And I started feeding her some. I was letting her have some every day and I noticed her pee started to smell so weird and I didn't really connect the dots that it was when I started giving her broccoli every day. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's gonna die. And I was like looking it up, like why does her pee smell weird? I was like, it could be a bladder infection, but she doesn't have a fever with it. And like, I, I discovered that it was from the broccoli. So if you don't know that and you start giving your baby broccoli, 
their pee will probably smell a little funny. She also loves beets, which is awesome because beets are amazing for brain health. She loves blueberries, which is great too because those have antioxidants. So I'm just like so excited that she loves all these foods. She will also drink a lot of bone broth. I try to give her a bottle with bone broth every day. Lately she hasn't been drinking as much of it because I think it hurts her to fall because of her ear infection, but normally I can get her to drink like five ounces a day, which is amazing. She loves to wave at us. It is the cutest thing ever. She waves two different ways. She'll do like this wave and then she does this wave. And if we start doing it at her, she'll like copy us and do it back. And it just makes her so happy whenever we wave at her and she gets to wave back at us. It just it makes her so excited. It's just the cutest thing ever. She jabbers and talks all the time and not like real words. She's not saying real words other than mama and dada yet. And she likes to say minnow, which I'm pretty sure she doesn't know what it means, but she says minnow a lot. So that's funny, but she just, it's still like baby talk. I can't tell what she's saying, but she, has things to say and she is so passionate about it and she has hand gestures and she moves her head like she, it's like a full-on conversation she is really trying to tell us something I so wish I could understand what she was saying because she is just so passionate about what she talks about it's so funny I've been trying to get a clip of her talking on camera but usually when I pull out the camera she stops so but if I do get one I will insert it here what did you do today what did you do today what else? She has become so affectionate lately. She will come up to us and give us hugs. And if I ask her for a kiss, she'll usually give me a kiss. She just like smooshes her face up against mine. <laughs> it's so cute. But usually I sit right here on the end of the couch and then she has the whole rest of the couch that she likes to like walk back and forth on and she'll just be playing and walking back and forth and the, ki the cat likes to sit in the windowsill that's behind the couch and she plays with the cat but then she like every few minutes she just like bumbles up to me on the couch and gives me this big hug and then goes up and plays <laughs> and so if we say, Sophia, can I have a hug? Or Sophia, can I have a little snuggle? She usually will give us a hug and it's just, oh, it's the best. She'll like wrap her arms around us and like lay her head down and just like rest there for a minute and then go off and start playing. But she's just so affectionate and she knows what we mean when we ask for a hug or a kiss. A lot of times she decides that she doesn't really feel like doing it, which is great that she like knows that she can like have an option in things and she'll shake her head no but most of the time she absolutely loves giving us hugs and kisses and it just like melts my heart that she's like getting to the age where she can show affection. Luke and her have the cutest game going on where usually every day he wrestles with her on the bed and he'll growl at her and like be on his hands and knees and she like tries to run from him and she tries to crawl really fast and then when she tries to crawl fast she tips over and it's just the funniest thing ever. But now she knows that when she, he makes a certain growling noise that he's gonna get her. And so no matter where she is, she tries to hide. And so lately it's been super funny because she'll be standing next to me on the couch like she likes to do and he'll growl at her. And she like dives on me and like grabs me and tries to hide and like, <laughs> it's, and she's just like cracking up at the same time. And it's, they just like have so much fun together. It is the cutest thing ever. And I love that they play like this together and she just loves her daddy so much. She gets so happy when he gets home and she starts reaching for him before he can even put all of his stuff down. And I love that she loves us both equally, just in a little bit different ways. She usually wants me for comfort and she, but she loves her daddy. She has been more gentle with her cats lately, which is awesome because she had been going through a phase where she would try to grab their tails and like pull them over and grab their hair. And so I was constantly having to like remind her to be gentle and I would like show her how to pet the kitty gentle. And so lately she's actually been like kind of catching on and she'll just like, like if this is my, if this is the cat right here, she like kind of pats, but just gently. Like, she's really, she's really sweet to the cats lately. And she gives them hugs. They're very tight hugs, and I don't think it's very comfortable for the cat, but she's like trying to show them how much she loves them, and it's just the sweetest thing ever. Yesterday, she discovered that the cats purr, and it was so hilarious because she thought they were like 
play growling at her when they would purr and so then she would try to hide from them like how she tries to hide from Luke and then she was just uh, ever since she discovered that they purr if she pets them and then she just like cracks up and tries to hide and she runs back and forth and she's like so funny. She's not walking yet still. She, I mean, I think she's just so good at crawling that she doesn't really see the point. She's, she's always standing up and she'll like pick up a toy and stand up with it and play with it but then she'll, if she thinks she wants to go across the room, she'll just get down and crawl. But she crawls so fast that I think she just doesn't realize that walking is very necessary. Like I think she totally could handle it because she's so good at standing. But I'm so totally not concerned about her not walking yet. All babies take different lengths of time to start walking or talking and she, she is totally healthy and she's a smart girl and I'm not worried about it. She is constantly climbing on the couch. I was a little bit sad when she discovered how to climb on the couch because I'll be working in the kitchen and normally she would just play by me. But she'll like crawl in here into the living room like really quietly. And our bed is right in front of the couch which is why she can climb on the couch because she climbs up on her bed and then she climbs up on the couch and then she tries to get on the coffee table and if, and I'll see her from the kitchen and I'll come in here and get her and she throws this huge temper tantrum because she wants to play on the coffee tables but she throws huge temper tantrums now like she's just thrashing around and screaming and I mean I understand that she is very disappointed that she can't do certain things and she throws temper tantrums now when she's not feeling well and she just doesn't understand why her teeth hurt so much or why her ear hurts and it's like it's a little shocking for me at first to like see her like throw this huge fit and thrash around and scream but then also I understand like because she's so little and she can't really process her emotions and show them the same way that we do that I just kind of let her feel her feelings and I give her hugs and I comfort her but it was definitely shocking when she first started throwing temper tantrums because I apparently wasn't prepared even though I knew, I knew it would happen eventually, but <laughs> the temper tantrums have started officially. Lately she's been trying to grab two things with one hand and she will like work on this for a long time where she's got where she's got two toys and she'll put them down and she'll try to like grab one and then like open her hand back up and grab the other one or she'll like pick one up in this hand and one in this hand and then she tries to like open her hand and put it in there with the other one and just like practicing with hand dexterity and how she can like hold two things with one hand and like what what kinds of items are too heavy to hold with one hand and it's just really fascinating to watch her learn these sorts of things. It is officially cold out here in Montana. There was a while that it was getting down to like three degrees at night and it didn't ever get above freezing during the day like it might get up to 10 degrees during the day. Now it's like warmed up a little bit more. It got up to almost 60 degrees yesterday. It was actually really nice. We were outside for a long time yesterday because she loves being outside, but not if she has to bundle up. And I was like, there is no way I'm taking you anywhere without bundling you up. You're gonna die, it's three degrees out. But she doesn't so much mind the coat and her hat is okay now. At first she really did not like the hat and she would rip it off. And I'd be like, I'm sorry kid, you, you really gotta wear your hat. So she's a little better about the hat now, but the gloves, oh my word. She hates her gloves. And because her hands are so little, I just got gloves that are just, they're just one thing that you put their hand in and it's just one like unit that just doesn't have individual finger holes because that's just way too tedious. And I feel like the gloves would just be too bulky for her to really grab anything anyway. But it makes her so mad that she can't really grab much of anything when she has her gloves on and she can't pull gloves off. And she gets so angry when she has to wear her gloves. And I feel so bad, but I mean, she's got to wear the gloves. And then we also just had daylight savings time, which is the absolute dumbest thing ever. I don't know why anyone thought this was a good idea and how they convinced everyone to change their time every six months. It is like just so stupid. So I, before it changed, I was trying to adjust her schedule back by, I was trying to adjust her schedule by 20 minutes every day. So I would put her to bed 20 minutes later because we don't. Ah, it's confusing. Luke changed one of the clocks 20 minutes every day so that I could just use that clock for her schedule and try to get her to kind of her normal time because the daylight, daylight savings time is so confusing to me and just like I do not get it at all and I was so pissed off for like the whole week before it changed and her schedule is still off. She wakes up before it changed, she could, could normally sleep until 7 and now she usually wakes up 
what is now like six, but would have been seven. So she's like, she's got her internal clock really set for what used to be seven, I guess. So it is the same time, which is fine. But like for me, looking at the clock, it's like six o'clock. I don't know. I feel like getting up at six o'clock, but it's okay. We'll kind of get it sorted out. And plus right now she's teething anyway. So it's not a great time to be trying to change her schedule around. I'm sure once she gets her teeth in, she'll probably start sleeping in until the, what is now seven, which I don't even know why. We just all need to rebel against this, like, but we gotta get everyone to do it. And then no one needs to change their clocks. We all just need to rebel against this stupid thing that everyone does every year and no one's happy about it. And Anyway, I digress. So we've been struggling a little bit with the time change and trying to get her schedule readjusted. So, but I just need to not worry about it. I just need to be okay with getting up a little earlier. She had kind of spoiled me because after she got her two top teeth, then she had this really long stretch where she was just so easy. She was so happy during the day. She would sleep all night long and she would sleep in until seven, like at least seven every morning. So I got like kind of really spoiled. So I just like, I know that babies wake up early and I just need to like get over it and wake up early with her. Especially since we have a newborn on the way and that's, I'm gonna have to get up early with him anyway, so. So I think that's all for this update. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really glad I was able to finish this before she woke up. Next month, she's gonna be a year old and I just, I, I can't even believe it. Like that my little baby, my first little baby is almost a year old and it's just so crazy to me. So I'm definitely gonna be doing a one year old update because that's just, that's a huge milestone. I can't skip that one. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. <gasps> Ah. <laughs>